Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I have the all new Mazda CX-50 behind me, which is built in the same factory as a Toyota Corolla Cross in the Mazda Toyota manufacturing plant in Huntsville, Alabama. So let me give you seven things I like about the Mazda CX-50 and the seven things I'm not too crazy about. Let's go. Welcome back. So from a perspective of an engineer, I can tell you that Mazda makes a lot more of an interesting car than Toyota or any other brand because their engineers focus so much on the capability of the steering, the handling, the cornering, all that thing that really matter to someone that likes to drive like myself. So Mazda, dare I say, makes better cars than Toyota when it comes to feel on the road. In fact, this CX-50 is perhaps one of the best handling small compact SUV out there. Substantially better feel than something like a RAV4 or Nissan Rogue. Uh, and I will take this over any of those if I'm driving this on twisty mountain road. So the point number one in terms of what I like about the CX-50 is that it's perhaps the best handling compact SUV in the market. The second thing I like is that this is built in a brand new Mazda Toyota manufacturing plant that's located in Huntsville, Alabama, as I mentioned before. And this place shares a lot of the philosophy between Toyota and Mazda. So you know that uh, the manufacturing practices and the Toyota way of thinking is embedded in the way this whole thing is built. So I really like the fact that this is a brand new factory in Huntsville, Alabama, and the two companies have come together to bring their strength. So that brings me to the third thing I like about the Mazda CX-50, which is related to number two, and that is the overall manufacturing quality in terms of the panel alignment, the gap, and the paint finish. If I were to look at all of the panels, the way that everything comes together is extremely consistent. About four and a half millimeter of a gap from front to back, and it stays consistent, and the alignment is almost perfect better than some of the Toyota cars I've seen and definitely better than any other Japanese or Asian brand. Even here in terms of the panel alignment and moving over here and all the way to the back, if I kneel down and look at it, the whole thing looks like it came from a single panel and that is because both Mazda and Toyota are producing the stamping parts in the exact same stamping factory so you know that the quality has to be good because they are sharing those things. Where Mazda and Toyota differs are the assembly lines. So at the final assembly line, they do have separate lines. One is called Apollo, one is called a Discovery. This is on the Discovery line, and Toyota is on the Apollo line. But in the beginning of the manufacturing, such as stamping, a lot of the practices are shared between the two companies. So if I keep on looking here, and even if I examine really carefully, I will tell you that uh, quality is absolutely first class, and it's probably the benchmark in terms of compact SUV segment. Not too many brands. Even Toyota can match this level of quality for the paint finish and then the alignment of the panel. So those are absolutely first class from my perspective. The third thing I love about the Mazda CX-50 is a 2.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, which is a Mazda exclusive engine. This is not shared with Toyota. It has 256 horsepower and 320 pound-foot of torque, which is a lot of torque for a small SUV. This is very smooth, extremely, extremely refined, and lots of pep at low RPM, because if you look at the actual torque curve, uh, maximum peak horsepower and torque happens pretty early in the curve, so give you a lot of great acceleration. Something that, once again, Mazda is better than most of other brands, because the acceleration, the way the six-speed transmission shift, it's all first class. And I really wish that other brands will take notice of the Mazda because they are often in the background and not noticed by other manufacturers, other consumers. But this is definitely the benchmark. So I love the engine, even though we don't get the hybrid or plug-in hybrid and more on that a little bit later on. The fifth good thing about the CX-50 is the overall styling and the design. Mazda has always been amazingly good when it comes to designing something that's pretty sleek and, and also has a low profile. This 650 is a little bit longer and wider and bigger overall than CX-5, but it's also a little bit lower. So give you that kind of a coupe style crossover look and it's beautifully done. Mazda have really great engineers and great designers resulting in a body that's sculptured to look like it's ready to go. What about the pricing, the value, and so forth? Well, there are different variations in terms of models and trims, and that is different for Canada and the US, so you want to look into the price uh, information in your own country. But if you compare side by side what you get in the CX-50 compared to, let's say, the RAV4 or Nissan Rogue, I think you get a bit more value for the money if you look at all of the future list. In fact, it has all the safety equipment, safety features, 
you get great performance. And as I said before, this thing drives like a small Porsche Macan. You, there's nothing else out there that feels like this. Now, I will say that the CX-5, which is also on sale still, handles a little bit better than CX-50 because this one is designed for North American market with a little bit softer feel. But overall, it has a really good agile feel. Uh, so in terms of value for the money and what you get is absolutely amazing. So the seventh and last point I want to make is that it's super underrated. People don't pay attention to it because people talk about Nissan, Honda, Toyota. But I have been to every single factory of all the Japanese car companies in Japan. And Mazda factory that I have visited in Hiroshima has what I call a real character. Compared to, let's say, Toyota or Honda or Nissan, which is really focused on producing the highest volume at the lowest cost possible, I think the Mazda's philosophy is different because their engineers are much more interested in producing something that can give you delightful driving character. And the manufacturing people have a slightly more artistic feel. And the people that I've met over and over again at the Mazda factory just have a different philosophy and character. So I really like that about Mazda, and I would say the CX-50 is the best Mazda SUV ever produced, and perhaps in terms of handling, and also feel, and in terms of engineer's perspective, it is the best compact SUV out there. So those are the seven things I love about CX-50, but it is not a perfect car by any means, so let me tell you seven things I'm not too crazy about. So what are some of the things I'm not too crazy about? Well, it's the powertrain options. Not so much about the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, which I love, but the fact that Mazda still have not offered hybrid or plug-in hybrid for CX-50. No, I do believe that is coming down the road, but Corolla Cross, which is built in the same factory, is already offering hybrid. So it's taking too long from my perspective for Mazda to come up with something that's competitive in the hybrid world. So that is my first complaint. My second and third complaint is somewhat similar. It's to do with the interior. While I love the exterior design and I love the way this thing drives, this is kind of outdated already. I'm not sure what it is about Mazda's approach to interior design. They keep it simple, it's very European, and it works just fine because we still get buttons all over the place. But in terms of the overall feel and the look, it looks kind of like a 1990s style. Now maybe that is intentional in the sense that Mazda likes to have some of the heritage feel, but if you compare this to the new Nissan Rogue or the even existing Toyota RAV4, it just looks quite outdated. So the interior design is not attractive enough despite the fact that, that we have some nice elegant touches such as the baseball glove stitching here and the overall functionality is good. I think the design could have been improved quite a bit. Which brings me to the number third point of what I'm not too crazy about and that is my biggest complaint is the whole infotainment system. Uh, even though this is a touch panel so you can actually go through here and uh, navigate it is quite a bit further than any other models that I've come across in this class of uh, cars and uh, it's just really far away and also the entire system is awkward. Uh, it took me three tries to just simply pair my Bluetooth uh, phone. Uh, it just keeps giving error and I had the same problem with another phone so I end up trying with three or four different phones and each time it will connect and sometimes disconnect again and so it's a bit buggy at this point and the entire system depends on this dial here to move around unless once again you want to reach all the way here to touch it so the infotainment system and the way it interacts with your phone simply needs to be improved once i move into apple carplay then it's fine but when i get into this main menu it is no longer touch panel either i have to go back to this dial and then if I go back to the Apple CarPlay, then I can touch again. I mean, how ridiculous is that? It only works at the touch panel half the time in Apple CarPlay, which is wireless, but it doesn't work as a touch play once I go into the main navigation. Uh, so let's go back here again, and there you go. No more touch panel. That is not acceptable, Mazda, and you need to sort this out, bring this a little bit closer, give us a larger infotainment system like the competitors, and then we finally have something that is as good as the others in terms of interior design. But for now, the engineers have to work on the infotainment system in terms of human interaction, and even the gauge cluster here is somewhat outdated already because we don't have a full digital instrumentation which is offered in a competitor's model. So interior is not so good. The exterior is amazing and the handling and performance is good. But well, let's see if Mazda can come up with something a little bit better for the future. My fourth point is a minor one, but I feel like Mazda doesn't offer 
as interesting of a range of different models as other competitors. If you look at something like a Jeep or even Toyota these days, they offer many different variations, including some off-road capable models such as TRD brand. For Mazda, they tend to stick with what's proven for them, uh, and but it gets a little bit boring in terms of the range of models. I wish that they would give us a, maybe a fancier version, give us a true off-road model with the off-road tires, which might be coming a little bit later on. And obviously, I'm still waiting for hybrid or plug-in hybrids. So Mazda, let's make the whole thing more interesting, give us a, a, a range of models that can truly compete with uh, some of the best in the world. The fifth negative point isn't really fair to comment right now, simply because this is all new, and it's a little bit hard to say, but historically speaking, Mazda's resale value hasn't been as good as Honda or Toyota or even Nissan. And this is just due to the fact that a lot of people don't know too much about Mazda and they don't have as much respect for the brand compared to, let's say, Toyota. So I will admit that's a bit of an unfair comment, but if you wait three or four years and you want to sell the CX-50 as opposed to if you had, a, a, let's say, a RAV4 hybrid or a Prime, then this will have less resale value than those models. The sixth thing I wanted to point out is really Mazda as a company, which I truly respect, but their marketing is very confusing. We have a CX-50, which is all new, but we still have the CX-5, and for a while we also have CX-3 and CX-30, and believe it or not, there are more models coming down the line from Mazda, but they are separating the model lineup for Europe, Asia, and also North America. So there are models that will be called CX-60, 70, 80, and 90, but depending on which country you live in, uh, different models are designed for those markets, whereas other brands, other automakers tend to consolidate those names uh, so that it's a little bit more consistent and easier to understand. It's already confusing having CX-5 and CX-50 at the same time. So this is something that I don't know why Mazda can't sort it out. So for example, maybe if CX-5 is more of a traditional look and feel, and this is more of a modern look, perhaps we could have called this CX-5 Coupe or maybe CX-6, just like a BMW and Mercedes have an interesting way of naming their models. So this is kind of a marketing comment, and it's not a huge deal, uh, but I wish Mazda will consolidate and standardize the naming scheme and make it easier for everyone to understand their model lineup. The seventh and the last thing I want to point out as a potential issue is a long-term reliability. Mazda traditionally has not done as well as Toyota or Honda when it comes to everything from JD Power survey to a consumer report surveys. So it's something that we don't know yet because CX-50 is new. And also because this is built in the Mazda Toyota joint venture factory, perhaps the long-term reliability and overall quality could be a lot better than it used to be. But some of the models within the Mazda lineup have not done as well as Toyota. So that is something that could be in the back of the minds of the buyers who are constantly comparing these models side by side. At the end of the day, I think the CX-50 is the benchmark. This is by far the best handling, most fun to drive, value-oriented compact SUV out there. And if I wasn't concerned about gas or fuel economy, I would buy this in a heartbeat compared to let's say RAV4 or even Corolla Cross. But today the world is different and people want amazing fuel efficiency through a hybrid or maybe even skip filling up altogether with a plug-in hybrid. In those regards, Mazda is falling behind. And perhaps those things will all change in the next couple of years as Mazda continues to evolve and bring new versions of the CX-50 and we're looking forward to that. Once again, Mazda is like the Porsche of the Asia and for that reason, I would say this is one of the best SUVs out there. What do you guys think of the uh, Mazda CX-50 and my comments about what's good and what's not so good? If you're able to give me a thumbs up, make some comments and subscribe, I would truly appreciate it. Until next time, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.